the Mountain. Welcome to King of the Mountain. It is time for the qualifying round of season four, tournament number one. I am ready, let's get this thing going. Let's take a look at our first four drivers. Our first driver of the night is Perla White, driving for Pooch Speed. Perla is driving in the Nissan Maxima wagon and comes to us from Mineola, Florida. Nice touch with that carbon fiber hood. Her car weighs in at 56.7 grams. Up next we have Takume Fujiwara. Wait a minute, Takume is from Haymarket, Virginia? Perhaps he moved to the United States? So you're saying he went from delivering tofu on Mount Okina to Haymarket, Virginia? I'm sure Haymarket is a beautiful place. Do they even have mountains there? I have no idea. Next up in the DHL Ford Sierra Cosworth is Cletus McYeetus. Not to be confused with Yeezus or Yeezys. I don't think anyone was confused about that. I'm just clarifying. McYeetus comes to us all the way from Saarbrücken, Germany. Oh, nice. Well, bonjour. Uh, they're German, not French. Okay, my bad. Hola. It's hallo. Anyways, our last driver is Hollingsworth Worth McMillions. Wait, hold up. Is that a dog in the back seat? Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, now I'm cheering for McMillions already. And he has the windows on that Mercedes 380 SEL open, so he is a responsible pet owner. What can I say? I got a soft spot in my heart for dogs. Here we go with our first race here at Race City. They're lined up, and they're off. Perla White and Takame starting in the front row. Cletus McGeetis currently in second place. They're through the first big turn. They're really moving fast out there. Well, these cars have all been modified from different builders around the world for speed. Perla White handling this track in that wagon very nicely. Very nice indeed. Perla White gets a time of 15.60. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, And there we go, our first wreck. Oh yeah. At the new location. Well, they had to christen this new racing area with some chaos. What better way than with a Ford upside down? Let's see what happened there, Takume gets into the back end of Cletus McEadis' car. I like this right here, look at McMillions. He goes in for the late hit, then he backs up slowly from the scene of the crime. Hollingsworth McMillions comes to us from Fort Walton Beach, Florida, and is driving for the Grey Poupon Driving Club. Oh wow, so he's rich rich. I guess so if you consider buying mustard a sign of wealth. Have you seen the prices at the grocery store lately? I don't really do the shopping. Just buying eggs is a sign of wealth. Here we go with race two, Perla White currently in the lead with five points. Cletus McEadis has three, Takume Fujiwara two, and Hollingsworth McMillions with one. Let's see if Takume Fujiwara still has it after all these years. He's currently in the lead in that white Toyota 8.6. Pearl White challenging for position around that corner. She gets blocked. Don't spill that cup of water, Takume. Fujiwara goes flying through the parking garage, and he will take race two with a track time of 15.5300 seconds. That puts Takume Fujiwara as the current season record holder. After two races. Yeah, I'm sure that won't stick. What happened to Hollingsworth McMillions? I think McMillions stopped over at Mickey D's for McNugget. Someone should tell him that's not the drive-thru. You know how these rich guys are. They don't want to go through the drive-thru like us common folk. They expect the staff to come all the way out to their car and take their order. But I'm gonna give Hollingsworth McMillions a pass here. Why? Because he has a dog. Plenty of people have a dog, that's no excuse. Come on, look at that dog. It's a good dog. Okay, it is a good dog. I gotta give it to him. I wonder what his name is. I think it might be Forbes. That's a very fitting name. I wonder if he likes mustard. You should never give your dog mustard. It's toxic for them. Huh. You learn something old every day. Here we go. They're lined up for race three. Mick Millions and Mick Yedis will be starting in the front row. Cletus McGeetis driving for last row motorsports. So he's used to coming in last. Hey, it's good to have realistic expectations. Here they go. Tight group into the first big corner. Mick Millions takes the lead on the exit. Cletus McEadis in second. He's closing in on McMillions. I'd like to be closing in on some McNuggets right now. Cletus McEadis trying to close that gap. Here they come to the finish, and McMillions takes the win with a 16.2225 second track time. Hey, what happened to Perla White? It appears Perla White may be paying a fee for the parking garage. Didn't someone tell her she doesn't have to pay if she's in the race? Well, validated parking can be confusing at times. All they have to do is show the parking attendant their waiver, but she's in a race. Well, it looks like she was having some car problems right there. Perla White up on the wall, then she pulls in, and look at that parallel parking. Impressive, I wonder if she has that automated parallel parking feature on that car. Those are pretty cool. Let's look at the standings going into the fourth and final race. Takume Fujiwara in the lead with nine points. Perla White and Cletus McGeetis tied with eight. Hollingsworth McMillions has six. Cletus McGeetis and Perla White in the front row, let's go. These drivers are very close on the scoreboard. Really, it's anybody's race. 
Pearl of White with a slight lead here. Cletus McGee just gets sideways. I think he spun all the way around. While he's blocking traffic, Pearl of White has a clear track in front of her. I think she might have this one. She's got an absolutely huge lead. This one is over and done. Pearl of White takes the win. Uh-oh. Whoa. We got an impact. Oh. Hey. There's some demolition derby right there. Hollingsworth McMillan's taking the brunt of that collision. I sure hope Forbes is okay. Do dogs have nine lives or is it just cats? They gotta have more than that. You're probably right. Look right here, Takame Fujiwara unable to stop his car. And once again, Hollingsworth McMillions leaving the scene of the crime. Yeah, now that you mentioned that there's something suspicious about that guy. He's probably involved with some kind of insurance fraud. Okay, let's not throw around accusations that we have absolutely no proof of. But the winner of the night is Pearl White driving for Pooch Speed in the Nissan Maxima wagon. Also, Takame Fujiwara is the current season record holder, so he's still in this thing, but I don't think 15.53 is going to be the top time for very long. I'm a little surprised to see Takame get knocked out in the qualifier round. Who knows, maybe we'll see Bunta take the track. Oh yeah, his old man really knows how to drive and make some good tofu. Welcome back to King of the Mountain. It's time for Season 4, Tournament 1, Qualifying Race 2. Our first driver tonight comes all the way from Luxembourg. It's Scotty driving for the Neckel Racing Team in the Ford Sierra Cosworth. That's a very nice car for Ford. 2D. What? Scotty's car weighs in at 49.9 grams. Next up in the number 80, it's Nick Devers. Nick Devers racing no stranger to King of the Mountain. I believe he goes all the way back to season one. Season one and season two, I'm not sure about three, but he is back driving in a BMW M1 weighing 58.2 grams. Hey, look who's up next. It's legendary demolition derby driver, Pinky Tuscadero. Wow, where has she been all these years? I don't know, but she's back and she's here for King of the Mountain. Pinky will be driving in a Mazda Savannah RX-7 FC3S. Why didn't they make the car pink? A total missed opportunity. Well, here's our last driver driving for Go Go Tomika. It's Julian Lim. Julian Lim will be driving in a Nissan Leopard. That's gotta be a first for King of the Mountain. Yes, it is. But why didn't they give it a leopard paint job? Leopard is just the model name of the car. It's another missed opportunity. It would have been pretty cool. Here we go, they're lined up for the start. Scotty and Nick Devers in the front row. There they go down the road for the first of four races. Scotty leading the group in that blue Ford Sierra Cosworth. Pinky Tuscadero right behind in second place. A bump on the tail from Tuscadero. She's got those demolition derby instincts. Pinky closing in. And she takes oh, the lead yeah. through the parking garage. Go Pinky. And race one goes to Pinky Tuscadero. Oh man, the Fonz would be so proud. Pinky Tuscadero was determined to find a way around Scotty's car and she did it. That's going to give her five points on the scoreboard, currently putting her in first place. Uh, what happened to Julian Lim? Oh, that's not good. We'll have to go to the replay on that one. Well, we are in the process of getting some more cameras. Unfortunately, we don't have one on this corner yet. Maybe one of those people caught it on their cell phone. Maybe, but we can't really get that right now. We're in the middle of the show. But look at this exchange right here. Scotty in the blue car in the lead. Oh, there goes Julian Lim. I saw him sliding upside down. Yeah, but look at Pinky Tuscadero right here, cutting through on the inside. Look at the way she blocks Scotty going around that corner. I'll tell you this, if she keeps driving like that, it's going to be happy days for Pinky Tuscadero. Tuscadero gets a time of 15.6575 seconds. Here they go, lined back up at the start. Nick Devers in the pole position. Julian Lim on his outside in the green Nissan Leopard. Julian Lim comes to us all the way from Singapore. Nick Devers in the lead in the white BMW M1, followed by Scotty. Julian Lim currently in third. Scotty trying to chase down Nick Devers. This appears to be a two-car race. Julian Lim and Pinky Tuscadero are way behind. There they go. And Nick Devers will cross the finish line first with a track time of 15.5844 seconds. We almost had a collision there between Julian Lim and Scotty. We got three drivers down here, but we are missing Pinky Tuscadero. Oh, I hope she's okay. It appears she stalled out at the entrance of the bridge. That DNF is going to bring her down on the scoreboard to third place right now. Well, there's still two races left. Here's the replay from the garage cam. Nick Devers in the white car, Scotty in the blue Cosworth. You can see Tuscadero right behind Julian Lim's car. Julian did a nice job blocking around that corner. I think he just understeered and lost control. That is two races down, two more to go. Nick Devers currently in the number one spot with seven. Scotty has six. Pinky Tuscadero has five and Julian Lim has two. 
It's a close group of cars as they pass the mall. There's contact. Pinky sliding around the corner. Some great blocking again by Pinky. So far, it's a very effective strategy. Pinky with a nice lead going into the last corner. Oh, Whoa! Oh, Pinky is oh, wow. It's craziness in the garage. Scotty crosses the finish line first. Pinky falls all the way back to third. Wow, Pinky really blew that lead. Well, she is our first driver to run into one of those cement columns in the parking garage. Well, it was only a matter of time before someone did that. Luckily, she just kind of sideswiped it with her car. It wasn't too bad, I don't think. You can see right there her car bouncing off of that cement column. That opened up the door for Scotty and Julian Lim to pass her up. Well, hey, at least it wasn't a DNF. That's true, and she could thank Nick Deers for that. You can see him right here sliding around, and then boom! The Malachi Crunch. Well, I guess as a demolition derby driver, she's probably used to getting bumped around. Here's a look at the standings going into the fourth and final race. Scotty on top with 11. Nick Deavers in second with eight points. That is a three point difference. Pinky has seven, Julian Lim has five. And there they go for race four of four. Tuscadero in the lead, followed by Scotty. Nick Deavers back in third, Julian Lim in fourth. Pinky sliding through the corner, gets a bump by Scotty. There goes Nick Deavers joining the party. It's a close one into the garage. Pinky Tuscadero with a block, and Pinky takes the win. But is it enough to qualify? There we go, there's a demolition derby. It is not enough for Pinky. Scotty takes the overall win and will advance on to tournament one of season four. Wow, look at that, Pinky won two races, but that DNF on race two robbed her of some much needed points, ultimately costing her the race. Yeah, on the other hand, Scotty only won one race, but came in second all three other races. Consistency is the key to winning. Yes, it most certainly is. Unless you're consistently coming in last place. Well, yeah, that's not good. Scotty is currently qualified for tournament number one in second place with a track time of 16.9097 seconds. And look at that, my boy Takumi Fujiwara is still the season record holder. It's only a matter of time before he gets knocked off. Yes, but let the Tofu community enjoy this moment, okay? Sure, go ahead. Welcome back. It's time for qualifying race three of King of the Mountain season four, tournament number one. First up tonight, all the way from Walmerol, New South Wales, Australia, is Mark D. Mark D will be driving in a favorite of the channel, the Ford Mustang. Hey, this one is a Fox body made in the 80s, so I'm okay with it. Well, it's good to see that you've come around. Then driving in the Jaguar XJS is Steve Ekman. It appears someone broke into his back window. He must come from the rough side of Orlando. Steve Ekman is driving for Game Sim. Does he think this is a game? Hey, this whole thing might be a simulation. You never know. Then driving for Team Puerto Rico Racing is Tito Racing. His last name is Racing, he's gotta be fast. Tito representing for Puerto Rico, driving in that Camaro IROC Z. There we go, now that is an 80 sports car right there. And finally, last up we have Psycho Philomena. Another great car right here, the Pontiac Firebird, love it. Psycho Philomena driving for the Rain Family Racing Team out of West Plains, Missouri. Ooh, that's a slow qualifying time. Yeah, 22.3. Hopefully they do better here in the race. Here we go. The drivers are lined up for four races. The top driver in points will advance on to King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament Number 1. Mark D of Australia leading them down the straight in that Mustang. We should tell those people down there to get back a little bit. We got some ponies running wild. Mark D looking really fast here. Tito racing in second place but he is not even close to Mark D. Mark D dangerously fast here. He is blazing down the track. Oh, 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 oh wow. Mark D setting a new record for season four, 14.1196, wow. That time is insane. I would hate to be in front of that Mustang. I think he's gonna kill somebody out here. 2D. I'm just saying. 14.1, that's faster than any qualifying run. Now it's very early on in the season, but that time just may stick as the season record. I guess we gotta say goodbye to our previous record holder, Takumi. Or we can say hello and place an order with Fujiwara's Tofu Shop if you're hungry. Oh, you know me too well, 3D. You know me too well. Hey, Susan, can you order the special? Oh, you want me to do it? You got it, boss. I guess I'll take over while 3D's placing that order. We got Broken Window Steve Ekman starting in the pole position and Psycho Philomena in the Firebird, the yellow car that's going very slow. Hey, Bunta, it's 3D. Steve Ekman sliding that car around the corner. Oh, uh, we'll do the usual. Mark D right on his tail in that Mustang. 
He's like a predator out there on the track. Oh, he's out for blood. Oh, he saw a spectator and he could not help himself. Did I miss anything? Oh, look at Tito Racing. Whoa. Whoa! What a pass at the end by Tito Racing to take the win. He stole that one right out from underneath Steve Ekman. That right there was an eventful race. We got to see that again. Oh, what happened here? 3D, a Mustang's going to do what a Mustang's going to do. Wow, what did he do? Let's just say that yellow post thing, what's it called? Uh, Bullard? Yeah, that thing just saved somebody's life. Here's the replay. He spins around Steve Ekman's Jaguar. And there he Ooh. goes straight for that girl. Oh, yeah, she was very lucky there. Bollards save lives. Put that on a t-shirt. You know, I was really hoping this Mustang would just have a clean oh. race. Oh, 3D. So young, so naive. Look, it's a Mustang, so it's fast. But that is a wild pony. Look right here. Tito Racing taking advantage of that crash. He goes from third place to first right at the finish line. With the last name racing, I wouldn't expect anything less. An absolutely beautiful last second pass by Tito Racing. That is going to put him in the lead on the scoreboard. He now has eight points. Mark D tied with Steve Ekman with five. And Psycho Philomena has two. Two more races to go. Let's see what happens. I'm guessing there may be a fatality tonight. Fatality. No, no, we are not projecting that type of energy onto the race tonight. Fatality. Stop pressing the fatality button. It kind of begs the question, why do we have a fatality button on the soundboard in the first place? I'd just like to be prepared for any circumstances that may occur. Fatality. Sorry, that's the last time. Mark D pushed around Tito, but he blocks. And Tito Racing will bring it past the finish line for his second win in a row. You know, I got to say that Mark D is kind of a bully. Hey, this is King of the Mountain. A lot is on the line here. That's the kind of attitude in racing you need to be doing if you want to win at this level. Well, he's not winning. Well, that aggressive driving can also have a downside if you drive off the road. You can see Mark D trying to get around Tito Racing. Pay attention right here. Tito pulls to the right. Mark D goes in for the pass, but then Tito Racing cuts him off to block around that corner. And that right there gives Tito Racing a big, big points boost on the scoreboard. Tito Racing now has 13 points. That's a five point lead over Mark D who has eight. The only way Tito Racing doesn't move on is if he gets a DNF on this race and Mark D takes first. Well, Mark D is in the front row. So I'm either expecting another fast time or a... Don't Ow. you dare hit that button. You slapped my hand. Oh, toughen up. Did you see that, Susan? TD, come on. It hurt my hand. Mark D currently in first, followed by Tito Racing. They're flying around the first 180. Mark D stretching that lead as Tito Racing has trouble navigating that turn. I think this is going to be another fast one. Clean driving by Mark D straight to the finish line. And hello, 14 seconds again. Oh, oh I told goodness. you. I told you. Fine, go ahead. Fatality. Okay, we get it. I told you and you slapped my hand. Hey, you were right. It was a fast time. It wasn't a fatality. We don't know that yet. But it was a massive hit at the finish line. And there's another wreck over by the Advan shop. Now look right here. I'm not going to blame this on the car. I'm going to blame this on the driver. Well, that's very mature of you. Let me talk to him. Yeah, Mark D, buddy, what's going on here? I know it sucks to lose to a car that's technically slower than yours, but crashing into the winner like that, that's not cool. That was nice, but what is this? Are we doing a talk to the driver segment now? I just want to be the voice of my generation. Okay, well, Tia Racing qualifies for tournament number one. He's currently in first place. Mark D, though, takes the season record holder spot with a very fast time, so he still has a good chance of making it into the Tournament of Champions. I just hope he learned something here tonight. I'm sure he did. Welcome back. Tonight is our fourth qualifying race in King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament Number 1. Our first driver comes to us all the way from Texas. It's Jameson driving for the Cash Money Boys. Jameson is driving in a Ford Thunderbird. He qualified with a time of 15.1378 seconds. Next up, we have Rubber Toe from Monster Motorsports Diecast Racing. Oh, this guy right here is a man after my own heart. The Nintendo and Mega Man theme on a Nissan Maxima wagon. I mean, he literally has Mega Man on his side. It is a pretty awesome looking wagon. Our next driver got happy with the Hydro Dip. It's CJ Hines driving for Steel Town Rundown Racing. Wow, that's an awesome looking paint job on that Cadillac Seville. It's a work of art, 3D. A work of art. It's very cool indeed. All these cars for season four have been very nice. Well, uh... Art is subjective. Yes, this car uh, from Road Rage Racing, that makes oh, sense. Okay, I get it now. It's driven by Speed Bump, or it's driven over a speed bump or it may have ran into a speed bump or it is the speed bump i will say that it has a lot of character to it yes lots of character 
Here we go, they're lined up for the first of four races. The top driver in points will advance on to King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament Number 1. Jameson in the red and black Thunderbird starting in the pole position. He's got a nice early lead here. Rubber Toe and CJ Hines fighting for second. CJ Hines passes him up on the turn. Whoa, now hold on to it. Jameson all over the place. He gets knocked off the road. Wow. CJ Hines takes the lead in the Cadillac Seville. Here he goes across the bridge to win race one with a track time of 16.8864 seconds. Wow, Jameson really blew that one. You know, with a name like Jameson, I'm just wondering what's in this cup? 2D. I'm just saying it seems like he may have had a little too many, you know. Mm -hmm. Look at that, Jameson getting stared down by that spectator. They appear to be having a few choice words. Well, he almost ran him over. I'd be pretty upset too. Let's go to the replay and see what happened there. Here he is coming out of the corner, hits the side, goes way up on two wheels. He's lucky he didn't roll it. And then right here, a hard hit on the nose from that Cadillac. And then he just pulls it over to the side. See, he did run into that guy. Well, that is a good reminder that if you're in Ray City, make sure you have those waivers filled out. You can pick them up here at 3D Botmaker Studios or at pretty much any local business in the area. Lawson Station, McDonald's hands them out with every meal. Yeah, they stuff them in your bag like napkins. Well, based on what we've seen so far, knock on wood, I think this is going to be the most incident-free season of King of the Mountain. I like your optimism, 3D. Hey, we've got guardrails now. What could go wrong? Rubber Toe currently in the lead. Look at him go. He's got the power of Mega Man. Nobody even close to Rubber Toe at this moment. This will be an easy win for Team Monster Motors. Oh, oh my! Fatality. Was that really necessary? I thought it was situationally appropriate. Rubber Toe flipping his wagon off the road and into the crowd. Do they have the safety team coming? Okay, good. The safety team is on their way. That's good. You know, we were just talking about waivers, and it's moments like these that remind you, you got to fill out the paperwork. Absolutely. Imagine if these people did not fill out their waivers. Oh, it would have been a disaster. Here's the replay. A wild flip by Rubber Toe in that wagon. And did you see that he managed to stick the landing? He stuck the landing onto the spectators. Yeah, well, he still landed it. Here it is from the sky cam. I think he hit about four to five people. That's not too bad, right? I think in season three, we only had one person ever get hit by a car. Oh, that's right. His name is Robert Paulson. Yes, his name is Robert Paulson. His, his name, name is Robert Paulson. Good news, the safety team is out there. Well, their vehicles are out there. These guys are really taking their sweet time. You know, it's times like these that really remind you of the important things in life. Ah, yes. You know, the things that are near and dear to your heart. Literally. You mean like a t-shirt? Well, since you brought that up, we do have new merch in the store, 3dbotmaker.com. It's the new King of the Mountain Season 4 logo. Oh, that's sweet. You can get the brand new design on other items as well, like coffee mugs, stickers, hoodies, even a backpack. Just head on over to 3dbotmaker.com and look for the link to the merch store. Also, the direct link to the merch store is in the description below. Support the channel and look good doing it. Yes, we appreciate everyone's support. And there they go for race three. We got Speed Bump in the Yellow Beetle starting in the pole position. I hope he doesn't get run over. Rubber Toe right on his tail, followed by CJ Hines in the Cadillac. Speed Bump still out front, bumping around. Rubber Toe knocking on his door. He's still knocking, but Speed Bump is not letting him in. Wow, that little Beetle's doing pretty good. Here comes Speed Bump over the bridge. And Speed Bump will get his first win of the night with a time of 16.6858 seconds. Speed bump getting shoved by Rubber Toe after the finish. Oh, what's he doing right here? Look at this. I don't think he appreciated that hit. He's pushing him back. Look at that, 3D. Speed bump putting Rubber Toe in his place in the most gentle way possible. you got to respect that. He's like, hey, look, I'm in a beetle, but I'm not just going to be pushed around. But he's so gentle about it, he kind of de-escalates the situation. You know, i got to say, I did not expect that car to win any races tonight. He was the slowest qualifier in this group, but as we like to say, anything can happen in Race City. Now Speed Bump is number two on the scoreboard. Rubber Toe currently has 11, Speed Bump has nine, CJ Hines has eight, and Jameson, who had the fastest qualifying time, is on the bottom with four. So he's got no chance. Nope, it all comes down to Rubber Toe, Speed Bump, and CJ Hines. Rubber Toe with a two-point lead, but he's starting all the way in the back row with CJ Hines in the pole position. They're all lined up at the start for the fourth and final race. Who will move on to King of the Mountain season four, tournament number one? Let's go. A close race here, all four cars grouped together. They're through the first big turn. Jameson now taking the lead, followed by CJ Hines. Rubber Toe back in third. Let's see if Jameson can stay on the road. So far he has the only DNF of the night. Rubber Toe battling it out with CJ Hines. 
And whoa! Finish him! So we have a finish him button now? Again, I thought it was situationally appropriate. Well, you're not wrong. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I guess. Steve, what do you think? Oh, yes, yeah, good. Steve likes it. That's great. Uh, Roberto is our winner of the night. He finishes with 13 points. CJ Hines was in second with 11. Let me talk to him, 3D. Okay. What is it that we learned here today? Forget all about the crowds, the waivers, and the new merch. Uh, uh, no, we don't want them to forget about the new merch. That's right. Uh, remember the new merch. But there's an important lesson to learn here tonight. And what exactly is that? Rubber Toe of Monster Motorsports Diecast Racing put Mega Man on his wagon, and it was awesome. That's it? It's friggin' awesome, 3D. All you're saying is that you like his car. He has Mega Man. Wow, okay. Uh, Rubber Toe moves on to Season 4, Tournament number 1, and is currently qualified in second place with a time of 15.4839 seconds. Welcome back. It's Qualifying Race 5 of King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament 1. Our first driver of the night is Fractal Panda driving in the Nissan 300ZX. Fractal Panda is driving for Fractal Panda Diecast Racing and comes to us all the way from Edinburgh, Scotland. It's nice to see some more international drivers. While our next driver is a little closer to home for us, it's Ann Arkey from Walnut Creek, California. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to cheer for Ann. Ann Arkey is driving for Team Ann Arkey Racing in the Buick Regal GNX, weighing 55.9 grams. Up next, we have Pam Poovy. Oh, Pam Poovy. That's right, Pam Poovy from Poovy Farm Racing. Oh, Pam Poovy is from Poovy Farm Racing? I was thinking of a different Pam Poovy. Oh, you're thinking of Pam Poovy from Pomona. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, Pam Poovy from Pomona drives a Porsche Panamera, I believe. Yeah, a purple Porsche Panamera. I got it now. And last up, trying to catch up and catch them all is Ash Ketchum in the Toyota 88.6 driving for ADK Racing. Oh man, he's powered by Pikachu? Apparently so. Oh man, I was going to cheer for the local Californian Anarchy, but I think I might have to go with Pikachu. You don't actually have to choose a driver. We're uh, supposed to be impartially commentating here. Yeah, but I have to pick someone. And Pikachu, I choose you. Congratulations on being partial for yet another race. It's a gift. Here they go for race one. Fractal Panda with a nice lead here. He's quite a ways ahead of the rest of the pack. Ash Ketchum trying to catch up. Come on, Ash, you gotta catch them all. Fractal Panda with some drifting there. Pam Poofy trying to close the gap. Where'd the other two guards go? I'm not sure right now. We're only seeing Fractal Panda who takes the win with a track time of 15.5055 seconds. He's followed by Pam Poofy who will take second place. Oh, we got a double DNF. You know, this McDonald's has become a new Hot spot for the racers, it seems like. They just can't resist. You smell it, and you just have to pull over. Well, it looks like Anarchy flipped over. Well, if you're going to wreck, you might as well wreck somewhere that has a restroom nearby and where you can get some hot food while you're at it. A pro tip on wrecking your car by 2D. Yeah, I'm not saying people should wreck their car, but if you feel that car starting to tip over, aim it towards a McDonald's. I just Googled car crashes and McDonald's. Apparently, that's been done many times before. It's better than crashing into a Burger King. Well, that's true. I I'd prefer to crash into, well, not into, but near an in and out Oh, yeah, now we're talking nothing like a double-double animal style. Here they go for race two. This time, Anarchy is in the lead in the red Buick. Fractal Panda close behind in second place in that black and gray Nissan 300ZX. Whoa! Oh, oh, you see that pass? Fractal Panda overtaking Anarchy like a boss, and he's going to pull it in for his Whoa. second win. Hope he's okay. He got a little wild there, but what an amazing pass around the golden arch turn by Fractal Panda. Look, he's there, he's fine. That was definitely some expert driving by Fractal Panda. Yes, two back-to-back -back wins, and that time he started in the back row. Here's the replay, right here you'll see Anarchy wobbling coming out of that right turn. Fractal Panda cuts to the inside and executes a beautiful overtake going around that turn. Let's see that one more time from the overhead cam. Oh yeah, look how he blocks the Buick as well. Here we go, two races down, two more to go. Fractal Panda sitting in a nice place on the scoreboard with 10 points. Pam Poovy in second with four. Pam Poovy really needs a powerful performance if she wants to progress in the points. If she could just push the pedal and prevent passing, she might be able to finish in a positive position. A close group of cars around the first big turn. Ash Ketchum sliding, blocking both lanes. And Arky passes up Pam Poovy to take second. Anarchy swerving. Whoa! Oh, another crash at the garage. And everyone else just slowing way down. Well, you know how people drive in traffic when there's an accident on the road. Yeah, but they're supposed to be racing. We got a track time of 20.3981 seconds. That will be a DNF for Anarchy. 
She only has three points after three races. I'm afraid it's all over for Anarchy. Well, so much for California getting into the tournament. I'm sure there's other drivers coming from California as well. Ash Ketchum really doing a great job around that corner, blocking both lanes. That kept him out in the lead. You can see Anarchy trying to find a way around Ash Ketchum, pulls to the outside, back in, hit her tire on the wall, and that sent her right into that parking sign. Man, they keep breaking stuff at the parking garage. Yeah, they're definitely going to get a bill for that. Okay, the score is going into the fourth and final race. Fractal Panda has 12. Pam Poovy and Ash Ketchum are tied with seven. That gives Fractal Panda a five-point lead. The only chance Pam Poovy or Ash Ketchum have is if Fractal Panda fails to finish the race and one of them comes in first. Yeah, it's a long shot, but we've seen long shots before. Pam Poovy starting in the pole position. Fractal Panda on the outside to her right. Poovy with an early lead, but Fractal Panda takes over. There's some contact between Pam Poovy and Anarchy. Poovy gets spun around. There's that crazy Jimmy style. Fractal Panda up on the wall with one tire. Recovers a solid lead here by Fractal Panda. And this is over. Yep, stick a fork in this race because it's done. And there you have it. Fractal Panda takes the win and is our first driver this season to win three out of four races. One more and it would have been a clean sweep. Yeah, it would have. I'm just waiting to use my perfect button. It seems you're adding new buttons every week. You've got to stay fresh. Fractal Panda getting it done with a score of 17 points. And with that track time of 15.4883 seconds, Fractal Panda currently qualifies in third place for season four, tournament number one. Scotland is in the tournament. Yes, they are. It's nice to see a good international representation here in King of the Mountain. Welcome back to Kingdom Mountain. Tonight is qualifying race six of season four, tournament number one. Our first driver of the night is Meow Max. Meow Max is driving for Catastrophe Racing in the Honda CRX. This one is looking good, 3D. We got the Hell Kitty and the Flames. Come on. They did a nice job with the pink interior and the pink trim. The license plate even says goodbye. Very nice touch. Up next, we have Suki driving for Porsche Pookies. Oh, the Porsche Pookies are here. You know the Porsche Pookies? I had a run-in with them back in the days, and I'd rather not talk about it. Okay, well, Suki is driving in a Porsche 944 turbo then driving for the possum town racing team is racer z racer z will be in a white and orange ford sierra cosworth that car has been very popular this season of king of the mountain yes we had quite a few of them entered into the competition okay on to our last driver of the night we have billy badass driving for mac attack racing billy comes to us from Cary, north carolina and is driving in a Chevy Camaro Z28. It's nice to see some American muscle in the mix. We've got a Honda, Porsche, Ford, and Chevy in the race tonight. Only one can advance on to tournament number one. Who's it gonna be? I'm going with the red car. There's two red cars, which one? Either one, everyone knows red is fast. Here they go down the road for the first race. Meow Max starting in the pole position. Suki right there in the red Porsche, Racer Z in the white Cosworth. Racer Z blocking Suki around that corner to take second. Neo Max is really pulling ahead now. No one is even close to that Honda CRX. Here they go around the final corner. A clean exit. And race one will go to Meow Max with a track time of 15.7757 seconds. Whoa. Well, I guess somebody wasn't happy about coming in second place. That was an uncalled for move by Racer Z. And look who finally decided to show up. Hey, it's better late than a DNF. That gets Billy at least one point. Meow Max currently on the top of the board with five points. Racer Z has three. Suki has two. A great first run there by Meow Max. By this point right here, it didn't even look like a race. All I gotta say is that is one fast kitty. Here they go lined up for race two. This time we have Suki starting in the pole position in the red Porsche 944. Suki comes to us from Sanford, Florida. And they're off for race two of four. Suki in the lead followed by Meow Max. Billy Badass back in third. Here they are through the first big corner. Meow Max looking for some action here. That kitty's gonna pounce. Max challenging for first, but gets blocked by Suki around the turn. A very smart move there by Suki. That move will secure the win for Suki on race two with a track time of 16.6103. Meow Max takes second, followed by Billy for third. Racer Z will take fourth. That's gonna put Suki one point behind Meow Max. Right now, it's not looking very good for Racer Z or Billy. Let's see a replay of that exchange between Suki and Meow Max right here. Max sees the opening on the inside, but just did not have enough speed to take Suki on that corner. Suki forcing Max into the inside wall. Here it is one more time. I absolutely love this type of racing. You can tell both drivers really want it, and they're not afraid to bang up their cars to get it. 
Well, there is a lot on the line here. Only the top driver moves on. Everyone else goes home. That's going to be two races down, two to go. Now Max is currently in the lead, followed by Suki. And they're off for race three. Whoa, Suki popping a wheelie there. Racer Z pulling ahead into first, side by side with Billy. They're still fighting for first here. We got a war in our hands. This is a slugfest, and Billy gets the better end of it. That was a badass move by Billy. Through the parking garage, and that's going to be a win for Team Mac Attack Racing. And a very close finish for third and fourth. I'm not sure if Suki got it, or if that was Meow Max. All I know is that right there was some good racing. We're going to have to go to the replay to see who got third and who got fourth. That was too close to call from here. We've got a photo finish on our hands. Here it is again. Keep an eye on the back two cars. Suki was in the lead. I think she got it. Yeah, I think Suki got it by a nose. Let's see it one more time from the overhead cam to make sure. Here it is. It's Suki. And yes, Suki comes in third place. Meow Max comes in fourth. And that win is going to put Billy right back in the game. He now has eight points, only one point behind Meow Max and Suki. Also, Racer Z now has seven points. That's only two points behind. Yeah, that race really shook things up. It is anybody's race here. Racer Z has the pole. Meow Max on the front right. Who is going to advance on to King of the Mountain tournament number one? Here we go. Racer Z off to an early start, but here comes Meow Max on the outside. Look at that Hell Kitty go. That cat is gone already. Max with a very big lead here. Can Racer Z catch up? I don't know. That's a fast little car. Meow Max into the garage, hits the wall there, but there is no stopping the power of the Hell Kitty driven by Meow Max as Max advances on to King of the Mountain tournament number one. A nice win there for Team Catastrophe Racing. We're missing one driver down here at the finish line. Oh boy. Oh, that's not good. It appears our boy Billy might be in trouble with the law. Yeah, I'm not sure how he would explain that to the officer. His car is on the hood of the patrol vehicle. Let's try to see what happened. Keep your eye on Billy's car in the back. He pops up on the wall. Oh, he broke the spoiler off the cop car. It sounds like they called for backup. Well, good thing for us, he signed the waiver. The waiver will protect him too, right? Uh, no, that's not how waivers work. It, it protects us. On the bright side, Billy will be the first driver of the season to get his car impounded. Hey, so, go Billy. Congratulations, Billy. Nice job. You did it. Well, let's turn our focus to the winner of this race, Meow Max, who's moving on to King of the Mountain season four, tournament number one. Max is currently qualified in fifth place with a track time of 15.7757 seconds. Welcome back. It's time for qualifying race seven of King of the Mountain season four, tournament number one. First up tonight, we have James Ironbeard driving for Ironbeard Customs. James Ironbeard is driving in a DMC DeLorean. Yes, we finally got another DeLorean in King of the Mountain. And look, it's red with flames. Well, we all know that means it's super fast. Next up is Kurt Denninger driving in the Nissan Skyline GTR R32. Hey, look, Kurt is from Tokyo. That's not too far from Race City. Kurt Denninger is driving for Team Rally Cross GT. Up next, we have another red car. It's Sayaman driving in the Mazda RX-7. A nice car there. Sayaman is driving for Team Puerto Rico Racing. And he comes from Puerto Rico. Well, I think we all assume that from the team name. He could be on the team from a different location. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Last up, coming to us from England, driving in the Porsche 928 is Monza Phil. He's got a roll cage in that car, so you know he is ready for King of the Mountain. It's not a bad idea, especially in conjunction with waivers. If only McClyde had a roll cage. Race, Race and McClyde. McClyde. Here we go. They're lined up for the first of four races. James Ironbeard in the pole position. That's such a manly name. James Ironbeard. Ironically, I saw him before the race. The man's clean shaven. What? I know. I was surprised too. You can't drive for Ironbeard Customs and not have a beard. I asked him about it and apparently he thought he would race faster like Olympic swimmers do when they shave all their hair off. Well, that makes sense. No, it doesn't make sense. This is a car race. Yeah, but aerodynamics and drag. He's in the car. Maybe his windows are open. Then roll up the windows. It might get a little stuffy in there. It's a ridiculous idea, but James Ironbeard does win the first race with a track time of 15. 0.9498 seconds. See, it worked. It didn't do a thing. Well, he won the race. Looks like Monza Phil decided to stop over at the car meetup. I agree there are some nice cars over there, but that is not the finish line. There goes Sayaman doing some backwards driving. 
and a drift in reverse. Monza Phil also trying to drift, but he was doing it in the wrong direction. That's because he's from England. Are you saying people from the UK can't drift? No, because they drive on the opposite side of the road. We're in Race City, Japan. Both countries drive on the left side. Oh, well, he probably just sucks at drifting. Here we go with race two. Kurt Daninger starting in the pole position in the orange and white Nissan Skyline GTR. Daninger in the lead with Ironbeard right behind him in second. Here they go through the first big turn. Some contact there. James Ironbeard trying to pass. That DeLorean is bouncing all around. Kurt Daninger still out in front. He's first through the parking garage. Drifts coming out of that corner and race two will go to Kurt Daninger. Whoa, James Ironbeard with a late hit there. That win will put Kurt Daninger within one point of James Ironbeard, who is the current leader with eight points. And look at that. Monza Phil scores his first point and only point so far. Here's the replay. James Ironbeard having a lot of problem in that red DeLorean bouncing back and forth. That really slowed him down on the straightaway there. Yeah, he definitely needs more speed so he can get to 88 miles per hour. Keep your eye here on the red Mazda driven by Sayaman in the back. A nice pass there through the garage to go from fourth place to third. Now that's how you do it. That's two races down. Here we go with race three. James Ironbeard on top with eight points. Kurt Daninger has seven. Sayman has five. And Monza Phil has one. Monza Phil in the blue Porsche starting in the pole position this race. But it's Sayman pulling ahead on the outside in the red Mazda. There goes James Ironbeard passing up Monza Phil. It's the two red cars out in front. Ironbeard looking for a pass. But he gets shut down by Sayaman. That Mazda is moving. Uh oh, he's sideways. Well, he was moving. Sayaman gets spun around, but will take Ooh. the win going backwards. Monza Phil slams right into that curb. A life lesson right here. Car versus curb. The curb always wins. The curb there doing its job protecting those spectators. It's only a matter of time. They'll be fine. I got this fatality button ready, 3D. We've got a DNF. This time it is not Monza Phil, but it's Kurt Daninger. That's going to knock him down on the scoreboard from second place to third. Let's see a replay of what happened. James Ironbeard right here trying to pass on the inside going around that corner. Hits the tail end of Sayman's Mazda. Meanwhile, Kurt Daninger bouncing around coming out of that 90 degree turn. Then you'll see right here Sayman understeering coming out of the garage. Ends up spinning that car all the way around. James Ironbeard popped up on the curb right there. Yeah, and that probably caused him not to be able to capitalize on that mistake by Sayman. Only one point separates James Ironbeard and Sayaman. Kurt Daninger is behind first place by four points. Sayaman has the pole. James Ironbeard in the front on the outside. All right, here we go. This is it, the fourth and final race. James Ironbeard in the lead, followed by Sayaman. Kurt Daninger in third, followed by Monza Phil. Ironbeard sliding around. Sayaman right on his tail. Here they go through the second big turn. It's Ironbeard and Sayaman. Sayaman on the oh, inside. He got him. It's not over yet. They're fighting for it. Oh, oh, Whoa. oh he slides past the finish. Sayaman will take the win. Going sideways, getting pushed by James Ironbeard. <laughs> and that is going to give Sayaman the lead over James Ironbeard to move on to King of the Mountain Season 4 Tournament Number 1. Wow, what a finish to this race right here. James Ironbeard was the fastest qualifier in this group. Sayaman was third. So this is a pretty big upset. Yeah, just look at this pass through that final turn, but James Ironbeard was not giving up. He was trying to push his way through. Sayaman turning his steering wheel to the right to lock in that lead and block Ironbeard from winning. And then we got good old-fashioned bumper cars to finish things off. Yeah, apparently Monza Phil is not good at braking either. There you have it, Sayaman in the red Mazda RX-7. Moving on to King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament Number 1. That's another driver in the tournament from Puerto Rico. Yes, Puerto Rico really representing in this tournament. Of the mountain. It's time for Season 4, Tournament 1, Qualifying Race 8. We've got a Cosworth, a Firebird, an Audi Sport Quattro, and a Porsche. Driving in the Ford Sierra Cosworth is Miles Chandler. Miles Chandler comes to us from Tasmania, Australia, and is driving for Team Nothing Sus. Did his license plate say stolen? Uh, I think so. That seems pretty sus to me. Up next, we got Disaster Jack. Jack comes from Mustang, Oklahoma, and is driving in a Pontiac Firebird. So he lives in Mustang, Oklahoma, but he's driving in a Pontiac. I don't think you're required to drive in a Mustang if you live there. I think it's pretty clear that Jack is part of the resistance. Our third driver of the night is Carl Vader. Any relation to Darth? I don't know. There's some black in the paint job, so maybe. I think the yellow paint on the front represents the fiery banks of Mustafar. Carl Vader comes to us from Italy and is driving in the Audi Sport Quattro. And finally, our last driver of the night, we've got an old timer. It's race car Grampy driving for Jelly Biddle Racing. Grampy comes from Locust Grove, Virginia, 
and is driving in the Porsche 959. As usual, the drivers will compete in four races. The top driver in points advances on to King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament Number 1. Miles Chandler and the Black Cosworth starting this race in the pole position. Miles Chandler with a slight lead, Disaster Jack on his outside in the yellow Firebird. A close group around the first big turn. Miles Chandler starting to build up a nice lead here. Disaster Jack still back there in second place. They're through the parking garage, and this race will go to Miles Chandler. Chandler gets a time of 15.8277 seconds. Overall, a pretty clean race there to start things off for the night. They all finished that one in their starting positions. Miles Chandler has five. Disaster Jack three. Vader has two. Race Car Grampy has one. Some good handling around those corners by Miles Chandler in that Ford Sierra Cosworth. Clean exit out of that turn, and you'll see right here another clean exit out the parking garage. While well, handling the turns is key to winning at Race City. We're back to the starting lineup for race two. This time we have Disaster Jack in the pole position. Race car Grampy on his outside in the black Porsche. Let's see what this old man has under the hood. Here they go. Disaster Jack with the early lead followed by Miles Chandler. Race car Grampy falling behind. Carl Vader trying to get around him. Use the force, Carl. Jack bouncing around. Miles Chandler closing in on him. He's going for the overtake. Jack with the block. Whoa, he popped up on the side there, but he makes it through to the finish line with a time of 15.6042 seconds. Oh, we got some bumper cars. We have sure seen a lot of paint chips flying down here at the finish line this season. Would you have it any other way, 3D? Well, it would be nice if the paint jobs weren't all messed up. Where's the fun in that? Here's the replay, Miles Chandler, some aggressive driving, trying to get around Disaster Jack. Jack with one eye on his rear view, making sure he kept Miles in the back. And that ties Jack with Miles. Both drivers have eight points. Whoa, Whoa. you see that? Race car Grampy rolled his car on the bridge. I did not see that the first time. Here it is again. That bridge is gonna become a ramp someday. Someone's just gonna go straight up. You know, you gotta give it to Grampy. He recovered well, made it past the finish line, did not result in a DNF. Hey, race car Grampy is a wild man. He's got my respect. We should take this time to remind everyone to check out the 3D Bot Maker merch store. We've got the new King of the Mountain logo merch, as well as the old one. A lot of other great designs as well. The link is in the description below. Support the channel and look good doing it. One, two, three. Visit 3D, 3D Bot Maker merch store. That came out as stupid as I thought it was. Well, your be. pitch was a little off, so you were a little it pitchy. Wasn't, it wasn't the pitch, it was the idea. It's Whoa, a, we lost somebody. Carl Vayner has wrecked. Oh man, he had the high ground too. Race car Grampy has the lead. Disaster Jack in distant second. Oh, there's another disaster. A hard hit by Miles Chandler. Race car Grampy passes the line. And here comes Disaster Jack to take second, going in reverse. It appears those will be the only two to finish this race. That was a wild one with a double DNF. We really haven't seen much of that this season. Miles Chandler stuck over at the parking garage. I think he stalled out after hitting Disaster Jack's car. And there's Carl Vader upside down after the first 180 turn. Let's go to the replay to see exactly what happened to him on that corner. There's some contact here. Race car Grampy cuts off Carl Vader, forcing him up onto the wall, and he flips right over. The force certainly was strong with this one, that being the force of gravity. Here we are down to the last race. Disaster Jack on top with 11 points. Miles Chandler and Race Car Grampy both have eight. That's three behind the leader. Carl Vader has the pole, but he only has three points. Well, it's over for him. Carl Vader out in front, but here comes Miles Chandler on the outside to take the lead. Some paint swapping through the first big turn. Disaster Jack sliding around there. Carl Vader with some aggressive moves on Miles Chandler. Chandler stretching out that lead now through the final turn. And this one, whoa! whoa, whoa. Miles, he's still going. He's got it back on his wheels and he made it past the finish line for the win. What in the world just happened there? I don't know, that was crazy. What's the score? The final score is, we've got a tie! Hey, yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Miles Chandler tying the score with Disaster Jack but that race almost ended in disaster for Miles Chandler. Miles trying to copy race car Grampy, I guess, and flip off of the side of the bridge. Someone may have told these guys that they get extra points if they can do a barrel roll. 2D? I didn't tell them that. That's just some crazy talk. Look me in the eyes. No, that, that's weird. Why would I do that? 2D? I didn't say anything about points. I may have said on social media that we're starting a new talk show in Race City and that we're looking for guests. Preferably drivers who could do some crazy stunts. So. It's a talk show, not a stunt show. 
and that has nothing to do with King of the Mountain. Hey, it was a pretty cool stunt. Well, here we go. Tiebreaker race. This will be one and done. Disaster Jack has the pole position because he had the faster time tonight out of the two drivers. Miles Chandler to his right in the Black Cosworth. Who's going to take it and move on to King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament 1? Disaster Jack currently in the lead. Miles Chandler not far behind. Jack loose going around that corner. Miles Chandler right on his tail here. Jack making some mistakes out there. He's all over the place. That's slowing him down, but he still has a lead. They're through the final turn. Whoa! Oh, oh. Okay, Miles. You could be on the show, bro. You can stop now. You see what you started? Hey, that Miles is a crazy man. That's not on me. Disaster Jack takes the win to advance. Miles did not recover this time. He's on his side. Let's go to that sweet replay footage. Right here, Miles already knows he's not going to win this thing. So let's go for the style points. Look at that. Who knew Big Air would actually be a thing here in Race City? It's not a thing. He just flipped over and crashed. Hey, I'm just hoping we see some more from Miles Chandler in the future. Great driving out there, buddy. Great driving. You're still encouraging this behavior. What do you want? A dull, boring race where everyone just finishes nicely and parks in their preferred spots? No, we want action, but... That's action, 3D. That is action. Okay, the clapping was unnecessary. Oh, sorry about that. I hear the safety crews on their way to help out Miles Chandler. Whoa. Uh, where are they going? I think they may have Disaster Jack and Miles Chandler mixed up. Well, Disaster Jack has qualified for King of the Mountain Season 4 Tournament 1 and is currently in 5th place with a track time of 15.6042 seconds. Disaster Jack putting Mustang Oklahoma on the map. Was that your impression of someone from Oklahoma? No, no, just someone from Mustang Oklahoma. Okay. King of the Mountain. Welcome to Season 4, Tournament 1, Qualifying Race 9. Tonight we have a Camaro, a Toyota, and two Mustangs. What could go wrong? Our first driver is Finn Theodore, driving for Michael's Diecast Garage and Racing. Finn is driving in a red Chevy Camaro IROC Z. Now that right there is a car. Finn comes to us from Houston, Texas. Up next, driving that one car is that one kid. Which kid? That one kid. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Are we done with this who's on first joke? Well, now you ruined it's it. It's old, 3D. It's old. That one kid is driving in a Toyota MR2. Which kid? Give it up, 3D. Fine. Up next, we have Allison driving in the pink Ford Mustang SVO. I see a My Little Pony nice touch Mustang pony car. I like it. Allison is driving for the Ice Cold Racing Team. And then last up, also driving in a Mustang SVO, this one blue and silver, it's Merlin, the magician. It doesn't say magician here. He goes by Merlin for short, but we all know who it is. Okay, well, Merlin comes to us from Santa Rosa, California, and is driving for the G23 Racing Team. Here we go at the start of four races. Finn Theodore starting in the pole position in the red and black Chevy Camaro. And they're off. Finn Theodore in the lead, that one kid currently in second. Allison overtaking that one kid. They're bunched up around the turn, but Finn Theodore really ahead of the rest of the pack here. That's the power of the IROC Z. This is not even a competition for Finn. Look how far ahead he is. Those Mustangs ain't got nothing on Finn. Oh, look at that time. Oh, yeah, look at that, 14. baby. Oh, oh, God. Holy mother of Mustangs. Where's my button? Fatality. Somebody get Susan on the phone for this one. I know I've been accused of being a hater, but I just got to call it like it is. That is a Mustang on top of a crowd. Unfortunately, that's what we're seeing right here. You can see it right here swerving back and forth. That's how you know your life is in imminent Ooh. danger. Oh, man, that is hard to watch. It is, but you know, Mustangs are going to do what Mustangs are going to do. Tootie. It's in their nature. You can make it pink and put My Little Pony on the side, but at the end of the day, it's an ice-cold crowd killer. Well, Allison is driving for Ice Cold Racing Inc., so there may be some truth to what you're saying. I think every Mustang should be followed by a hearse. We don't need a hearse. The medics are out there. We got the safety crew working on the job. Susan has the team finding their paperwork, so we're going to be completely fine with this incident. Let's see it one more time. To be fair to Allison, she did take a bump from that one kid. Yeah, but she was aiming for the crowd. Here we go. The drivers are back to the start. That one kid starting in the pole position in the yellow MR2. Merlin on his right in the blue and silver Mustang SVO. You know, that last race has me wondering, should we assign points? Points for what? You know, spectators. No, we are not encouraging that at all. Maybe just a record sheet. Absolutely not. That one kid in the lead followed closely behind by Finn Theodore. Whoa, Finn spun out. He's going backwards. That one kid slowing down. Finn Theodore with a pass in reverse. Oh, oh. Merlin also gets through. And that right there will be two wins in a row for Finn Theodore. Oh, man, I like Finn Theodore. Fast driving, going in reverse. He's got all the makings of a legend. 
That one kid and Allison getting stuck on the bridge. The kid blocking traffic, resulting in a DNF for both drivers. Well, for the sake of the crowd, it would be best if Allison did not move on to the tournament. I gotta agree with you there. That one kid out there doing God's work. Look at this pass by Finn Theodore. He spun out, ended up going in reverse, but he does not slow down at all. I'm getting some serious Crazy Jimmy vibes out of this guy. Looking at the scoreboard, Finn Theodore has a monster lead over the competition, 10 points. Merlin has four, Allison has three, that one kid, two. Let's see if Finn Theodore can make it three in a row. We have yet to see a clean sweep this season. Could this here be the first? The two Mustangs in the front row, Merlin in the lead, followed by Allison. That one kid cutting off Finn Theodore. And he's blocking. That pretty much seems to be what he does. Whoa, Allison hitting the wall hard there. Merlin all by himself through the parking garage. Finn Theodore finds a way around that one kid, and race three will go to Merlin, followed slowly behind by Finn Theodore and that one kid. Well, no clean sweep, but he did find a way to pass that one kid, so that's pretty good. So far, that's two wins for Finn Theodore and one second place finish. He's definitely a top contender. And there's Allison pulled over for a late night snack. So far, we haven't had a lot of DNFs. But this corner of Race City seems to be where they happen the most. Well, you know how it is. You're driving by, you smell that food, and you just gotta pull over. That could be it. Either that or Allison saw a crowd behind that building. I don't think it's that. Crowds are like a magnet for Mustangs. Have you ever considered it may not be the car, but just the driver? Allison just might not be good at racing. So you're going with the old Mustangs don't kill people, people kill people argument. It's always the driver's fault. What about Teslas? That's different if it's self-driving. You clearly have not been behind the wheel of a Mustang. Here we go with Race 4. Finn Theodore on top of the scoreboard, but Merlin technically could catch up. We'll see. Allison with the lead, but here comes Finn Theodore on the outside lane to take over. They're through the first big turn. Finn Theodore pulling ahead now. No way they're catching up to him. That Chevy Camaro is fast and straight. Look how it handles the corners. Oh, he's got this one. Clean exit out the parking garage, and Finn Theodore dominates this qualifying race, winning three out of the four. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that's a way to finish it right there, 3D. A Mustang in its default pose, upside down on its roof, is something really a stereotype if it's always true? It's not always true, it just happens to be kind of frequent on the channel. Again, no hate, I love the Fox body, but it's a dangerous car. This wasn't really Allison's fault, she got T-boned by the MR2 and the, the other, other Mustang. Mustang. Exactly. Ah, uh, you got a point. All I know is that crowd, well the fans that are left, got very lucky on this one. Also on that note, Crazy Jimmy's Cafe is offering a free meal to any spectators hit by a car during King of the Mountain. Well, that's going to encourage even more people to stand up there. Yeah, you're probably right. Have you tried the Crazy Burger? Oh man, it's to die for. Finn Theodore advances on to King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament Number 1, and he's currently the number one qualifier with that track time of 14.685 seconds. He was getting very close to Mark D's time. Mark D still has the fastest run, 14.1196. Of the Mountain. Welcome back to the qualifying round of King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament Number 1. Let's see the lineup for tonight's race. Up first is Frank White, driving for Elevation Diecast Racing. Frank White comes to us from Loveland, Colorado, and is driving in the Buick Regal GNX. Grand National Experimental. Oh, I'm surprised you actually knew that. Then driving in the Ford RS200 is Emil Speedster. Emil driving for the Soul Family Racing Team comes to us all the way from Bavaria, Germany. It looks like he's ready for some rally racing. Go for the big air, Emil. Go for the big air. Then we have Dangerous Brian from England. Dangerous Brian driving for Team Suffolk Punch is in the Audi Sport Quattro. You know Brian may be dangerous, but he is not more dangerous than the next car we have right here. Well, I guess that brings us to our last driver. It's Manzi driving for Suburban Nerd Minis in the Ford Mustang SVO. Don't you think it's a little soon to have one of these cars back out the racing, especially after the events of last week? We have a schedule that we have to stick to. Just look at this thing. It already has damage on the bumper. How'd that happen? They probably had a rough qualifying run. It's an instrument of destruction, 3D, an instrument of destruction. We'll just cross our fingers and hope for the best. Here we go with the first race. Frank White starting in the pole position in that silver Buick GNX. Dangerous Brian right on his tail. Here they go through the first 180 turn. Frank White looking good out there so far. He's doing some clean racing in that Buick. Taps the wall there, gets a bump from Brian. Driving dangerously. And Frank White will hold on to the lead to take the win on race one. Whoa! There you go. That almost took out some people. Emil Speedster popping up on the curb after the finish. It appears he is okay and no one was hit. Well, that's a relief. His car was headed straight for the crowd. You can see him bouncing back and forth right here. Hits the center divider. 
That sent him flying into the curb to spin around. Luckily, he landed in the road. I think that Mustang is rubbing off on him. Are you seriously going to blame every crash on a Mustang, even when the Mustang wasn't involved? Emil is driving in a Ford. He's out there with Manzi, who's driving a Mustang. I think there's a connection somewhere. I think you're just biased, and you're making connections where there aren't any. It's intuition, 3D. I have a sense for this type of thing. This time we have Emil Smeetzer in the RS200 in the pole position. He is really moving out there. Frank White in second. White gaining on Emil Speedster. Can he catch him? The chase is on right here. Emil picking up some speed. Here they go over the bridge, and race two will go to Emil Speedster. A close finish there for third and fourth. Frank White not taking that loss very well. Dangerous Brian also running into Manzi. Well, that wasn't really Dangerous Brian's fault. Manzi kind of spun around and got in the way. Wow, the bias is strong with you tonight. I am not biased. That's what happened. I really thought you were making progress in this area. I don't need to make progress. I'm fine. I'm just calling it like it is. You know, denial is like 3D, the first stage. 3D, can we stage. get back to this race, please? I'm just trying back to help. to the race. Do you need a hug? No. Are you hungry? No. Well... Kind of. Ah, see, I knew it was something. Rule number one, never commentate on an empty stomach. I was trying to get some food before I got up here, but Jimmy's had a long line. Well, it is a popular spot on race night. Here we go with race three. Manzi in the black Mustang starting in the pole position. Dangerous Brian on his outside in the Audi Sport Quattro. Here we go. Manzi in the lead. It's a close group into the first big turn. Emil with the uh -oh. overtake on the inside. What a move. Now he's blocking traffic. Going backwards, this is chaos. Oh, such sweet, beautiful chaos. Now he's driving Crazy Jimmy style. Emil Speedster through the parking garage, over the bridge, and will take the win going in reverse. Ooh, is he gonna be okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. What a win there for Emil Speedster. That win right there will move him to the top of the scoreboard. He now has 12 points. Frank White in second with nine. Dangerous Brian has seven, and Manzi has five. That was a pretty epic move by Emil. Here's the replay of the overtake. Emil on the inside, overtaking Manzi. Then he goes right into a blocking maneuver to slow everyone else down. You know, blocking like this right here is a high risk, high reward type of situation. In this instance, it paid off big time for Emil. It certainly did. Emil now three points ahead of Frank White. Frank White is starting this race in the front row. Emil Speedster in the back. So it is certainly not over yet. But you gotta be feeling pretty good right now if you're a meal speedster. I'd be feeling pretty good right now if I had a meal, like something to eat. Can someone get this guy some food? Maybe some chips. Dangerous Brian in the lead. Frank White in second place trying to catch up to Brian. And Meal Speedster back in third place. Frank White trying to make a move on Dangerous Brian. Brian sliding out of the parking garage, and he will take the win on race four, followed by Frank White. Somehow a meal felt whoa! Ooh, that was nasty. Dangerous Brian upset about something. And I think it's the score. Oh, wow. Emil advances on by one point over Frank White and Dangerous Brian. That is close. I did not think it was going to be such a close finish in points. Emil was in third place, fell back to fourth. But it was the win on race three where he overtook Manzi that secured his spot in tournament number one. Well, he certainly knows how to take a hit. Hopefully that didn't knock him out of alignment. And there you go. Emil Speedster putting Germany in the tournament. He's currently qualified in eighth place with a track time of 15.8982 seconds. Welcome back to King of the Mountain. In tonight's race, we have a Chevy Citation. What the heck is that? It's a car, 2D. It's a car. Huh. Our first driver of the night is Ronan. The Barbarian. I think it's just Ronan. The Barbarian. Not a Barbarian, but he is driving in a BMW M3. As Barbarians are known to do. Are they now? Yes, they are. Okay, that's ridiculous. It's not an insult, it's a fact of life. Next up, we have Fern from Redondo Beach, California. Fern is driving in a Audi Sport Quattro and represents for the FUMO Diecast Racing Team. Huh, FUMO. Don't even try to figure it out. F-U-M-O. Next up, it's Dan Deering in the Chevy Citation. So that's a Chevy Citation. Yes, it is in all of its glory. You know what? I kind of like it. Well, you must have a thing for bad cars. Hey, I have good taste. Who brought the Fiero to this channel? My point exactly. It's a great car. And last up, we have Wu Song from Singapore driving in the Toyota Celica 2000 GTR. Wu Song driving for the MMJW team. Don't try to figure out the initials. Mickey Mouse. No. Jabberwocky. Here we go. The drivers are lined up for the first of four races. Top driver in points advances on to King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament Number 1. Ronan in the blue BMW M3 starting in the pole position. Fern taking the lead in that blue and black Audi after the first turn. 
sliding around the big 180. It looks like Ronan is slowing down traffic. He had the fastest pre-qualifying time in this group, but right now Fern is leading the pack through the parking garage. Dan Deering gets the overtake on Ronan. Go Chevy Citation, go. Wow, Ronan just fell apart on that race. That's Barbarians for you. We're still missing one driver down here at the finish. There it is. Wu Song has crashed in the Toyota Celica. Our first DNF of the night. Let's go to the replay. Right there, you can see Wu Song hits the side wall, pops that car up, and then slides down the road. But now look at that red Chevy Citation driven by Dan Deering as he overtakes Ronan in that BMW on the outside of that turn. I gotta say, the Chevy Citation beating out the BMW is pretty impressive. I think I may have found my new favorite car. The car was so bad, GM got sued by the US government. So what, the Pontiac Merit got sued by Ferrari? That's because they pretty much copied the 308. Getting sued is like a badge of honor. Chevy must have been doing something right with that Citation. Well, they certainly gave it the right name. Here we go with race two, this time Fern with a strong lead here in that Audi Sport Quattro. Fern looks unstoppable out there. And Ronan looks very stoppable. Fern spins around. Oh yeah, that must be a crazy Jimmy fan. Fern now driving in reverse, I guess to see where the competition is. They are way behind. And Fern takes the win on race two. That's two in a row for Fern. Whoa, that was a close one. And there's Ronan in the garage, just pulling over. Hey, you know what? You gotta know when to hold him, know when to fold him and no one to pull over to the side when the race is done. Well, he would at least got one point if he made it to the finish line. But then he would have came in last. Well, a DNF is even worse. I think it sounds better to say you got a DNF than to say you came in last place. Well, strategically speaking, it's much worse. Eh. But that was an impressive maneuver by Fern. Apparently the competition is so slow, Fern is doing trick maneuvers just to stay entertained. I'm sure Crazy Jimmy is in his cafe right now with a big smile and a thumbs up. Jimmy definitely inspired a generation of diecast racers. So far, Fern has a big lead here, 10 points. Dan Deering in second with five. Wu Song has three, Ronan with two. Wu Song out in front, followed by Fern. Dan Deering in distant third, and Ronan is way behind. Did someone forget to tell Ronan this is a race? He's driving like it's cruise night at a car show. Meanwhile, we got a fight for first. Wu Song getting pushed around. Wu Song wins the exchange and will take the win on race three. Here comes Dan Deering in the citation. Where is the BMW? I'm guessing he probably stopped somewhere to eat. Well, that is going to be a second DNF, but you still can't say that he came in last place. Because he can't finish, which is infinitely worse. It's all in how you look at it. Well, he's certainly last place in points. He only has two compared to Fern, who has 13. Here's the replay of that exchange between Wu Song and Fern. Wu Song in the white Toyota Celica. Right here, you'll see Wu Song pull to the right. Fern tries to pass on the inside. Wu Song pulls hard to the left to block which ended up being successful, giving Wu Song the win on race three. Wu Song now has eight points. That's five points behind Fern. Basically, Wu Song needs to win this race and have Fern not finish at all. Pop those tires, Wu. Okay, we are not encouraging sabotage. Hey, this is King of the Mountain, whatever it takes. And they're off for race four. Dan Deering starting in the pole position in that red Chevy Citation. Let's go, Dan, you got this. Well, mathematically, Dan does not have this. He cannot win at this point. Well, then do it for the glory of the Citation. Daring swerving out of control. Ah. Wu Song passes. This might be the break Wu Song needs. Whoa. Oh, no, Wu Song loses control. Wow, that was sad. Wait, here comes Dan Deering. Yes, Citation for the win. And he stops. No. Some contact in the garage, and no one's going to finish this race. Wow, so much action, multiple passes, and no one makes it to the finish line. You know, sometimes that happens in racing. Dan Deering almost got the win in that citation too. We're gonna restart the final race, but first let's see what went wrong. And I think it's the fact that Dan Deering chose to bring a Chevy citation to King of the Mountain. What, that's arguably one of the best things that's happened to King of the Mountain. Well, his performance in that car has been lackluster to say the least. Well, it's not over yet. We're gonna rerun the last race. Dan Deering can't win, he's six points behind. Well, he should get a bonus point for something. That's not how it works. Oh, come on, give him something. Look, honestly, I think Dan Deering needs to get a citation for bringing that car here. Wow, a real citation hater. While this mess gets cleaned up that was caused by the citation, we're gonna go to break. That was not his fault. Welcome back. Here we go with the restart of race four. Fern has a five point lead over Wu Song. Both drivers starting in the back row. Dan Deering in the pole position. Citation owners of the world, send Dan your positive energy right now. We need a win for Team Citation. Dan Deering in lead followed by Wu Song. 
Ronan gets overtaken by Fern. Come on, citation. Dan Duty's oh, off the road. Come on. Wu Song now in the lead. Why? If Wu Song wins this, he may have a chance. If Fern gets a DNF, whoa, he's sliding around. Will Wu Song get lucky? Ah, uh, here comes Fern, rolling through crazy Jimmy style. Oh. Oh. Wu Song gets pounded at the intersection, and just like that, Fern will take the win. 16 points over Wu Song's 13. Okay, I think this whole time, Ronan's been trying to figure out how to get into that car show. Now that you mention it, I think you're right. Oh boy, that's not good. Oh yeah, it appears Dan Deering has ran into the patrol car, making him our second driver of this season so far to get his car impounded. Hey. Good job, Dan It's Deering. something, you know, you can't win them all. Let's try to see one more time what happened to Dan Deering in the Chevy Citation. The steering on that car doesn't appear to be very good. Well, that car actually has a tendency to lock the rear wheels when you apply the brakes too hard. Oh, I see. So the car would end up skidding right into whatever you're trying to avoid. Kind of like Chevy's version of the Mustang. No, the Camaro would have been... Well, okay, I see what you're trying to do there. I think someone's going to be in trouble. I hear the cops. It appears Dan Deering is getting an actual citation from the police for driving recklessly in his Chevy Citation. Wow, the irony. Fern will advance on in the Audi Sport Quattro to King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament Number 1, and is currently qualified in ninth place. Welcome back to the qualifying round of King of the Mountain. Tonight we have two Buicks, a Porsche and a Volvo. Our first driver, wax on, wax off, it's Mr. Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi is going for broke in the Buick Regal GNX. I guess he is going for broke. What are those decals made of, paper? The one on the hood is not even attached to the car. Moving on, also driving in a Buick Regal GNX, it's Leadfoot Arlo. Leadfoot Arlo driving for the Bearded Man Racing Team, and I can confirm, Leadfoot Arlo does have a beard. Well, that's good, not like that Iron Beard guy. Then check this car out. This car is a showstopper. The Porsche 944, driven by J. Eduardo Rodriguez Vasquez. Now that right there is a custom car. Eduardo is coming to us from Hiroshima, Japan. Oh, well, Konbanwa. And finally, our last driver from 4-6 Diecast Racing, it's Boog. Oh, hey, it's Rick Boog. No, it's just Boog. It must be a relative. I have no idea what you're talking about, but Boog is driving in a red Volvo 760. So we have two Buicks, a Porsche, and a Volvo. So there's a 50% chance a Buick will win this race. The question is, which one? Here we go at the start of the first of four races. Mr. Miyagi in the dark blue, Leadfoot Arlo in the light blue, Eduardo currently in second place behind Mr. Miyagi. Hey, no, that's J. Eduardo Rodriguez Vasquez. I'm not going to say his full name every time. Well, you should. Mr. Miyagi and Eduardo tangled up. They get spun around, and there's a hit from Leadfoot Arlo. Mr. Miyagi still in the lead, but they're all slowed down now. There's a tap from behind by J. Eduardo Rodriguez Vasquez. It's a relatively slow race to the finish line as Mr. Miyagi takes the win, followed by J. Eduardo. Keep going. It's too long. Come on. Rodriguez Vasquez. Come on, you gotta say it with some passion. Look at that. Leadfoot Arlo and Boog get stuck on the bridge. Look at this exchange here between Mr. Miyagi and Eduardo. Rodriguez Vasquez. Mr. Miyagi with the blocking maneuver ends up going south here as they both spin around, but it was Leadfoot Arlo to the rescue to get them both headed down the road in the right direction. Some teamwork there by the Buick drivers. Let's see what happened right here to Leadfoot Arlo and Boog. Right here at the exit, Leadfoot Arlo with some understeering gets sideways, then he gets stuck on the bridge with Boog. That will put five points on the board for Mr. Miyagi. Jay Eduardo has three, Leadfoot Arlo and Boog, double DNF, that means they both have zero. There's three races to go, plenty of time to turn things around. This time we have Leadfoot Arlo in the pole position, Boog starting on his outside, but he's fallen behind already. Mr. Miyagi chasing down Leadfoot Arlo, Jay Eduardo all the way in the back. Leadfoot with a good sized lead here as he enters the next turn. The Buicks are in charge of this race. Arlo's looking good here. Through the final turn. Whoa! Ooh, Mr. Miyagi just waxed off the bridge. Mr. Miyagi was in second place. He crashed. Leadfoot Arlo takes the win, followed by Boog. Jay Eduardo takes third. I think Mr. Miyagi may have attended the Crazy Jimmy School of Driving. Miyagi's Buick upside down on the bridge as the bystanders look on. Here's the replay. Look at Leadfoot Arlo drifting around that turn. Beautiful maneuver. That was nice. Mr. Miyagi, on the other hand, pulling a hard left coming out of that corner. I can hear the track crew on their way to help out. Oh, well, that's uh. Do they not know it's that car? Uh, yeah, they missed it. The car was upside down. How'd they miss that? Well, at least it was a fast response. Well, it's not much of a response if they don't help. I think they're turning around now. Well, the results of that race now brings us to a three-way tie for first. Mr. Miyagi, Jay Eduardo, Rodriguez Vasquez, and Leadfoot Arlo all have five points. 
Boog on the bottom with three. Boog starting in the pole position. Let's go for six. Jay Eduardo on his outside in the Porsche. A close group so far, but there goes Jay Eduardo pulling ahead in the Porsche 944. Mr. Miyagi gets sideways, blocking traffic. I think we just lost Boog. Jay Eduardo with an open lane in front of him. He is really moving fast out there. He's all alone. Nobody is even close to this guy. Where is second place at? I think they gave up. And that is a fast time by Jay Eduardo. 15.2872 seconds. There's Mr. Miyagi. Apparently, we have lost the other two drivers. That is going to be a second DNF for both Leadfoot Arlo and Boog. Well, I guess you can blame that one on Boog. Let's see what happened here. Mr. Miyagi pulling hard to the left again. That caused Boog to spin out, so I don't know if it's really Boog's fault. Leadfoot got stuck behind Boog's stopped car. That means this fourth and final race is really between Jay Eduardo. Keep going. Rodriguez Vasquez. There you go and Mr. Miyagi. They are both starting in the front row with only two points separating the drivers. Here we go, who's gonna qualify? Jay Eduardo out in front in the lead. Another hard turn left by Mr. Miyagi. Oh man, that wax on, wax off has really got to him. Jay Eduardo off the edge, but he recovers. What's going on here? Eduardo still moving fast out there in that Porsche. He's through the final turn, over the bridge, and Jay Eduardo Rodriguez Vasquez will take the win and move on to King of the Mountain tournament number one. Some great driving there by Jay Eduardo Rodriguez Vasquez. You just love that name, don't you? It's fun to say. Eduardo gets a four point win over Mr. Miyagi. Leadfoot Arlo finished in third, and it was a rough night for Boog. Three DNFs. Better luck next time, Boog. Now I know this is not a car show, but I gotta say, it's nice to see a good looking custom like this move on to the tournament. I couldn't agree more. Simple Customs 64 did a great job on that car. It looks great, it runs straight, and it is fast. You really gotta appreciate the quality work that they put into that car. And on top of that, their driver has a great name. Jay Eduardo Rodriguez Vasquez puts Japan in the tournament and is currently qualified in second place behind Finn Theodore. Welcome back to King of the Mountain, Season 4, Tournament 1, Qualifying Race 13. Tonight we have our first Corvette of the season. Sweet. But first up, he's back. It's Mark D. That's right, Mark D, the current season record holder, is back. He set the fastest time for the season so far in his Mustang, but he failed to qualify. Now he's back with his DMC DeLorean to try again. Well, he's got a much better car now. Then up next we have... Mr. K. Mr. K driving in the blue Ford Thunderbird. He comes from Sterling Heights, Michigan, and is driving for the Blazing Diamonds 164th Racing Team. Our next driver representing for all the baby daddies out there, it's Trevor Brown. Trevor Brown driving for the Baby Daddies Racing Team. He'll be racing in a Porsche 930 Turbo. He needs a little paintwork on the front there. I do like the graphics on the hood. And finally, our last driver in the Chevy Corvette C4. It's Dax Quaid driving for the DXP Racing Team. Okay, first of all, Dax Quaid is an awesome name, but why is that car so dirty? I think that's just how Dax Quaid rolls. Okay, it seems kind of cool when you say it like that. Here we go at the first of four races. Top driver in points advances on to King of the Mountain tournament number one. Mark D in the Golden DeLorean starting on the inside lane. Mr. K in the front on the outside. Trevor Brown in the white Porsche currently in second place behind Mark D. A lot of pushing and shoving there. Mark D is really moving out there. Look how fast he's going. Wow, he's flying. Look how straight he's going. Mark D all by himself here. Straight as an arrow to the finish line. Whoa! 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 No way! What? Do you see that time? Wow! We've got a new record. Sub 14 second time, 3D. Whoa. A sub 14 second time. I I didn't know if we'd ever see a time below 14 seconds. Mark D just broke his own record time. He was the current record holder. Now he broke his own time. That's crazy. I did not think we would see anyone break his first time that he set in the Mustang. What was it? 14, 1196. Then he shows up in a golden DeLorean and gets a 13.8294. Mark D has King of the Mountain written all over him. Looking at the replay, Trevor Brown started getting off the road bounced into the front entrance of the garage. Dax Quay with a nice maneuver, avoiding impact. And there goes Mr. K rolling through demo derby style. If you're gonna hit someone, back up into him. Did you learn that at the Crazy Jimmy School of Driving? Yes, I'm taking online night courses. It's online, can't you do it anytime? No, just at night. Well, that was sure an exciting start. Here we go with race two. This time, Mr. K has the pole position. Dax Quaid on his outside in the light blue Corvette. Dax Quaid in the Corvette. It sounds so cool. Mr. K has the lead, followed by Mark D. Mark D closing in. He got him. Mark D 
Fifty with the overtake on the inside. They're through the final turn. And that will be the second win in a row for Mark D. Mark D is a beast. Mark D taking this qualifying race very serious. He does not want to leave anything up to chance. And right now he has a five point lead over the competition. Speaking of leaving things up, there goes Trevor Brown with two of his tires raised to the sky. Not a good night so far for Trevor Brown. Let's see that pass again by Mark D. Saw that opening went on the inside. Look at how he cuts to the left to block Mr. K. And then it was all open lanes from there to the finish line. Listen, we all knew Mark D was a good driver. All he needed was a good car. The DeLorean is clearly that car. The DeLorean was kind of known for being unreliable. Listen, if that car could take Marty McFly back in time so he could try to date his mom and then forward into the future while still being called back to the future, it's good enough for Mark D. Well, I'm not going to argue with that. Here we go with race three, Dax Quaid in the pole position. Dax Quaid has the pole. Oh yeah. It's so cool. You and names. It's an awesome name. Dax Quaid in the lead. Mark D overtakes Trevor Brown on the turn. Mark D is all about business tonight. Dax Quaid still has a nice lead here. Whoa! Uh-oh. Whoa! Oh, oh my ouch. good lord. Damn! Dax Quaid just got pummeled. Who put the hit out on Dax Quaid? Look at that. Mark D still going. Oh, you can't stop Mark D. This right here will be Mark D's third win in a row. Amazing. That means he now has 15 points, a DNF for all three other drivers. That gives Mark D a 10-point lead over Dax Quaid and Mr. K. Yeah, this race is already over. Mark D is moving on. But with three wins in a row, you know what that means. Mark D may be our first driver of the season to get a perfect score. Ooh, look at that hit. Dax Quaid getting caught between a light post and a DeLorean. Then he goes flying into the ticket machine and ends up upside down in the parking garage. We gotta see that one again. Watch that Corvette go to the moon right here. Oh wow, that thing flipped way up in the air. Good thing that wasn't a convertible. Here's hit two from Trevor Brown, and then to finish things off, Mr. K. Mr. K with the kill shot. Bam! Emergency crews are on their way to the side of the crash. Oh, come on. Well, they made it. Who hired those guys? They must be non-union. Well, at least they're fast. Although now one car is on top of the other, which makes things worse. Let's have one more look from the garage cam. I think this right here is probably going to be in the top 10 worst wrecks of this season. It's a pretty big wreck. That is three races down, one final race to go. Mark D will be advancing, but the question is, can he get a clean sweep? Also, look at that Trevor Brown on the verge of getting a reverse clean sweep by never making it past the finish line. Well, this last race may set two new records for the season. And with the track record by Mark D, that'll be three for the night. Trevor Brown in the lead. Contact around the turn. They're fighting for it. They're all bunched up here. Oh! Mark D gets spun around along with Trevor Brown. Dax Quaid has the lead. Watch out for those light posts. Quaid through the final turn with Mr. K in second place. And Dax Quaid will sloppily pass the finish line to take the win on the last race. Ah, uh, no clean sweep. What the? <laughs> Mark D just told those losers to get out the way and make room for a real champion. We may just be looking at the future king of the mountain. Hey, he qualified and he's the current record holder. Mark D is what we like to call in the business the man. The man, that's a technical term. Absolutely. Well, this was a pretty crazy finish. Mark D got forced into the guardrail along with Trevor Brown. And hey, good on Trevor Brown for making it past the finish line at least one time. Sometimes it's good to celebrate small accomplishments. Good job, Trevor. Way to go. Good job. Nice. Mark D will advance on to King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament Number 1. He is currently qualified in first place with a track time of 13 0.8294 seconds. How does one guy have the two fastest times? It's crazy. Mark D putting Australia on top of the board. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Welcome back to King of the Mountain, season four. We've got a Ford, Porsche, Nissan, and a Mercedes. First up, we have Ryu Shidoshi driving in the Ford Sierra Cosworth. Shidoshi comes to us from Gore, Virginia, and is representing for Team Puerto Rico Racing. So Ryu is from Virginia, but he's driving for Puerto Rico. I'm sure there's a great story behind that, but up next we have Wingmaster driving in the blue Porsche 959. The Wingmaster is from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and is driving for the Oklahoma Outlaws. I could go for some wings. That does sound good right now. Then driving in the Nissan Maxima wagon, it's Minima. So we got Minima in the Maxima. Very clever. Minima coming to us all the way from Hong Kong, China, driving for X3 Performance. And finally, our last driver of the night, we have Mr. H 
in the Mercedes 500 SEC. Hey, there goes Mr. H right there in the car. What's on his face? I think it's a fireproof suit, but look at that. He has the Triforce on the hood of his car. Nice, a Zelda car just in time for the Tears of the Kingdom release. Oh man, I almost didn't come into work tonight because of that game. Well, I'm glad you did. We can't skip work because of games. Some might argue that what we're doing right now is a game. This is not a game. This is real racing. It's, there's a big difference. I'm with you. That's just what some people say. Here we go at the first race of four. Ryu Shidoshi out in the lead in the white Ford Sierra Cosworth. Wingmaster in second place, followed by Minima. Ryu Shidoshi owning this course right now. No one's even close. Here he goes into the second big turn. A solo drive right now for Ryu Shidoshi through the parking garage turn. Whoa! Whoa. Wow. There goes the Wingmaster. Wingmaster flips over oh. the Porsche. Ooh. Ouch. Did he make it? Let's see, he's down here at the finish line. Did he make it past the line? It's close. Yes, he did. <laughs> he flipped this car over and still finished. The back wheel still spinning there, but the question is, what place did he come in? It was a tight finish between him and Mr. H. Let's see what happened to him on the bridge. That right there is a classic barrel roll spot on the bridge. This section of the road really needs a name. I say we name it after the first person to jump off. That No, that's, that's totally going to encourage people to jump off the bridge now. Well, think about it. You're saying jump your car off the bridge and we'll name it after you. Okay, well, maybe it's not my best idea. It's a terrible idea. Well, here's the finish and Wingmaster takes third. Well, he has Mr. H to thank for that finish. It's a pretty good day when you roll your car, but still finish in third. Well, hopefully he keeps it on all fours and does not try to jump the bridge. Yes, do not jump off the bridge, but we might name it after you. No, if you do. no, we're not. We probably will. Here we go at the start of race two. Wingmaster in the pole position in the blue Porsche. Ryu Shidoshi right behind him in the white Ford. He's trying to catch that Porsche. Mr. H and Minima trailing behind. There's some contact. Ryu trying to overtake Wingmaster. He's trying to get him. Ryu going for the overtake. He's on the side. Oh, and he gets stuck. Wingmaster makes it out of the garage, and he'll take the win on race two. It appears he's the only one who will finish this race. Wow, you're right. Yeah, everyone else is stopped on the road. That's what we call a triple DNF, or what I like to say, a triple D, or 3D. Well, that is going to send Wingmaster up on the top of the scoreboard. He now has seven points. Look at this exchange here between Ryu and Wingmaster. Ryu looking for the opening. He sees it right there. Wingmaster forces him onto the side barrier, and that brings Ryu to a stop in the garage. Some aggressive driving and good maneuvering there by the Wingmaster. I mean, if he's that good at driving, imagine how good the wings taste. You really need to eat first before the race. I told you I was playing Zelda. I lost track of time. You can see there Mr. H got sideways coming out of that turn. Ended up blocking the road for Minima. That's going to cost both drivers in points. The current score, Wingmaster on top with seven. Ryu Shidoshi has five. Minima has three. And Mr. H has one. This time we have Mr. H in the pole. Minima starting on his outside right in the silver Maxima wagon. It's a close race right now between all four drivers. Some bait swapping through the turn. Everyone right now fighting for position. Mr. H in the lead. He's off the side. Hold on to Mr. H. He's still in the lead. All three other drivers bunched up behind him. Mr. H through the garage, followed by Minima. Where'd the other two go? I'm not sure, but Mr. H will win race three with a track time of 18.2591 seconds. Minima comes in second place this time. That is going to give us a very close score going into the final race. There's only a two-point gap between first and last place. Wow, this is anybody's game right now. Let's see what happened to Ryu Shidoshi and Wingmaster. You can see right there Minima sideways blocking the Ford and the Porsche. Then coming out of the corner, Wingmaster gets turned sideways, and that brings the Master and Shidoshi to a stop. I would just call that pause because you cannot stop the Wingmaster. Okay, well, here we go with the final race. The Wingmaster currently has seven. Minima and Mr. H both have six. Ryu Shidoshi has five. Minima and Shidoshi are in the front row. Minima has the pole. All right, here we go. Who's going to take it? Minima with a slight lead here. Ryu Shidoshi not far behind in the white Cosworth. They're through the first big turn. Wingmaster currently back in third. Shidoshi's looking for the pass. Minima shuts the door on him through the turn. It all comes down to this right here. It's a close one through the garage. They're over the bridge. And Minima will take the win with a track time of 15.7391 seconds. That means Minima and the Maxima will be advancing on to King of the Mountain Season 4 Tournament Number 1. That was some great racing at the end there. I thought Ryu was going to find a way around Minima, but he just could not match the handling and speed of that Maxima. That will actually be our third Maxima wagon to make it into the tournament. I love it. It's a great vehicle. There you have it. Minima will be advancing on to King of the Mountain Season 4 Tournament Number 1 and is currently qualified in ninth place. 
Welcome back. It's time for another qualifying race in King of the Mountain. We've got a Nissan, BMW, Chevy, and a Ford. Up first, it's B. Cavello driving for Mission 307. B. Cavello comes from Washington, D.C. and is driving in the Nissan Silvia S13. That's a pretty cool doodle art style paint job. Yes, very cool. Then up next, we have Derp the Robot in the BMW M1. I knew it was only a matter of time before AI took over diecast racing, and the moment is here. Well, we'll have to see how this machine stacks up against the other drivers. Always look at the hands. That's how you know if it's AI. Well, up next, he's mad. Oh, boy. He's angry. Watch out now. It's Angry Al in the Chevy Camaro Z28. Angry Al, fresh out of a mud pit or something. He does not believe in washing his car. Well, he's Angry Al. And then finally we have... Oh, my. Oh, oh goodness. You all right? No, I just... A little in my mouth. Uh, you sure? I'm okay. You need some water? No, I'm good. It's uh, King Jester 65, who apparently thought this was uh, Demolition Derby or Junkyard Wars or something. That's a salvage title for sure. It's something. Well, somewhere underneath all that Bondo is a Ford Sierra Cosworth, apparently. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Certainly an interesting matchup today. Top driver in points advances on the King of the Mountain Season 4 Tournament number 1, and they are off for the races. B. Cavello in the lead, followed by Angry Al. Such a contrast here tonight. B. Cavello's car is like a work of art. Jester 65's car. 2D, be nice. It's a work in progress. That's fair. B. Cavello absolutely dominating race one, and will take the first win with a track time of 15.4524 seconds. Oh, come on, don't ruin that paint job. A little fender bender at the finish line. All four cars get involved. You know, in the dark, if you squint your eyes a little bit, that Cosworth doesn't look half bad. The night racing can be forgiving to paint jobs that are in progress. Ooh, I just got an idea. When paint jobs go wrong, a new series coming to the 3D Bot Maker channel. You know, after four seasons of King of the Mountain, we actually have some entries for that show, but no, we're not going to do that. Oh, come on. I'm already thinking of a spinoff series when cars don't roll. Unfortunately, we have quite a few cars that could qualify for that as well, but... Come on, let's do it. Who would want to see cars with bad paint jobs that don't roll? Everyone. Nobody wants to see that. If you guys are with me, let 3D know in the comment section that you want to see cars with bad paint jobs that can't roll. Are you even listening to the words that are coming out of your mouth? All I hear are the words of a genius. <laughs> wow, okay. Anyways, here we go with race two. Derp the robot leading this race so far. B. Cavello in second place. Come on, B. You can beat the AI. Oh, oh. Camaro down. Oh, boy. Al's going to be angry. There goes B. Cavello with the overtake. Yeah, B. Stick it to the machine. But here comes Derp the robot to take the lead right back. Oh, it's not fair. It's AI. It's cheating. Let's see if B. Cavello can do it again. A chase to the finish, but Derp the oh, oh, wow. That was rough. A nasty wreck at the finish. Oh, and look at King Jester. Is this whole thing a joke to him? Derp the robot takes the win. That will put him in second place, one point behind B. Cavello. And there's Angry Al upside down on the first big turn. He wrecked that Camaro right away. He's got to be pissed about that. He hits the side barrier there pretty hard. And I think that blown motor on the top is going to give him some balancing issues. It does look cool, though. Here comes the track crew to help out. Wow. wow. I guess the track crew is going to need assistance as well. Well, I guess that's job security. Let's cut to a replay of that exchange between B. Cavello and Derp the Robot right there. B. Cavello overtaking Derp, but then Derp the Robot overtakes B. Cavello on the inside. Great calculation made there by Derp the Robot. Calculating is what machines do, but I still say it's cheating. Well, we didn't put any rules in to say no robot drivers. Well, there should be. And it is the 3D Bot Maker Diecast Racing League. You know, I never understood the name. Oh boy, I'm scared to say this, but I hear the track crews coming again. Hey. That actually wasn't bad. Nice job. It was okay. Good job there. That's two races down, two to go. B. Cavello sitting on top with eight points. Derp the Robot has seven. Angry Al and King Jester 65 both have three. Jester 65 has the pull, and by the looks of that car, he's ran into a few as well. Angry Al on the outside pulling ahead. Oh, oh wow. Al Rex, but he's still going. How'd he do that? Oh, and he's crashed again, I, I think. He's a madman. B. Cavello once again out in front of everybody. Uh -oh. Whoa. That car's getting loose. Somehow B manages to tame it and bring it past the finish line for B. Cavello's second win of the night. That is going to be big for B on the scoreboard. Derp the Robot comes in second place, and that's going to be a DNF for Angry Al and King Jester 65. Wow, double DNF. What is going on with Angry Al's car? I think it's a mixture of bad balancing and road rage. Well, now I can see why his car is so dirty. You know what they say, go big or go home. Angry Al? He's going home. Well, yeah, he is going to go home. And how many times did he wreck on this race? That's actually a good question. I'm not sure if we've had anybody wreck twice before in a race. He crashed on the first big turn, recovered, then crashed again. So Angry Al may have made a little history here tonight. Mr. Al, 
We salute you. Okay, here we go. Fourth and final race. B. Cavello has 13. Derp the Robot has 10. The other two drivers do not matter at this point. B. Cavello on the front right in the white and black car. Derp the Robot right behind in the silver BMW. Right now, Angry Al has the lead, but here comes B. Cavello. There's contact going around the turn. Angry Al going backwards now. It appears he's telling B. Cavello that he's number one, which is not true. Not even close. Angry Al sliding around them. B. Cavello overtakes Angry Al. Oh, and he crashed again. And he's back up. That guy's crazy. B. Cavello takes the win and will be advancing on to King of the Mountain Season 4, tournament number one, ending this round with an 18-point score. Very close to a perfect score. And on the other end, Angry Al and King Jester ending this race with only three points. I think Angry Al really has some issues that he needs to work out before he comes to the racetrack. But with that said, I do have to give him some props for attempting to do a crazy Jimmy maneuver. Right here, he tries going around that turn backwards, backs into the wall. That opens up the lane for B. Cavello to pass. And then I think Angry Al ran into the light post. Man, it was just a bad night for Angry Al. B. Cavello will be moving on to the tournament and is currently qualified in fifth place with a track time of 15.4524 seconds. Welcome back to King of the Mountain. It's time for the final qualifying race of season four, tournament number one. Our first driver is Vinny Dobbs driving in the Audi Sport Quattro. Vinny Dobbs driving for the SNR racing team comes to us from Canton, Michigan. I believe an Audi has already qualified, right? Yes, it was Fern who qualified with an Audi Sport Quattro. Speaking of the Audi Sport Quattro, up next we have Strike. I think it's just pronounced Strike. I was doing the baseball umpire thing. They're from the UK, so I'm not sure if they get your American baseball reference there. Well, how do they say it over there? Oh my, it's a strike. That was both bad and offensive. They'll get over it. While rolling up from North Hollywood, California, we got Wes Kosen. Oh yeah, California love, baby. Wes Kosen driving in style in the gold and black Buick Regal GNX. That car is fly. And last but certainly not least, we have Hot Haley in the green Mazda RX-7. Oh man, the paint job on that car is green like money. Hot Haley comes from Brentford, Ontario, Canada, and is driving for Team Mojo Customs. That's a sweet paint job. Here we go, there's only one spot left in tournament number one. One of these four drivers will take it. Who is it gonna be? There's a 50% chance it's gonna be an Audi. Or could it be an Innie? I didn't know we were doing dad jokes tonight. I apologize. Here we go, Vinny Dobbs in the orange Audi in the lead. West Coast and behind him in the gold and black Buick. Vinny Dobbs looking smooth out there. He's got a nice lead here. Can he maintain it through the rest of the course? A little trouble there hitting the wall. Here he goes into the parking garage. Oh, and he spins around. He must have been to the Crazy Jimmy School of Driving. And Vinny Dobbs will finish the race going backwards to take the first win of the night with a track time of 16.7521 seconds. Well, it's nice to see some CJSD alumni out there tonight. I think we learned that reverse J-turn in Tactical Driving 102. You're still taking those online night courses? Oh yeah, I'm learning so much. Let's see that maneuver by Vinny Dobbs. Oh man, he executed that with perfection. A plus Vinny, A plus. That's one race down, three to go. Vinny Dobbs currently has five points. Strike has three. West Coastin has two and Hot Haley has one. Strike and Hot Haley in the front row. Strike driving the red Audi. Hot Haley in the green Mazda. Right now it's Strike in first place followed by Vinny Dobbs. The Audi's currently controlling the streets. They seem to have some good handling. Strike currently way ahead of everyone else. Vinny Dobbs spinning out of control back on that turn. Strike is through the parking garage. Whoa. Whoa. He's going for the flip. And Strike will win race two followed by Wes Cosin. And there goes Vinny Dobbs in oh, reverse again. Ouch. Ooh. Strike getting struck by Hot Haley and Wes Cosin down at the intersection. I guess he was asking for it with that name. But that win does put Strike up on top of the board. He is one point ahead of Vinny Dobbs. Let's see that fender bender one more time. Right here, Strike hits the curb. Haley really had no time to break or get around him. But that doesn't really explain Wes Cosin. Oh, he's too chill to jam on the brakes. Wes Cosin is just here to cruise. That's great, but he should be here to race. That could be said about several qualifiers that we've seen. That is true. Here we go with race three. Hot Haley in the pole position in the green Mazda. Wes Cosin on the outside to the right in the front row. Right now, the score is very close between the two Audi Sport Quattros. They're both starting in the back of this race. Strike working his way into second place, riding the bumper of Hot Haley. Strike bumps into the wall. Hot Haley now growing that lead. Haley could sure use the points here. There's still one big turn left through the parking garage. Strike trying to catch up to Haley. Here he comes. It's a close one. And Haley just barely takes the win over Strike. A few more feet and we may have had an overtake there. That win will tie Hot Haley with West Coast and both have seven. Vinny Dobbs has eight. 
Strike sitting on top with 11 points. So this is certainly Strike's race to lose, but everybody is still technically able to win at this point. Very close contention for second place. You can see right here Strike gaining on Haley through the final turn, and then right here pulls up on the side, going over the bridge, and that there was the closest finish of the night so far. Close racing all the way to the finish line. You gotta love it. All right, this brings us to our fourth and final race. Strike starting in the back row here. West Coastin has the pole. Vinny Dobbs only three points away from Strike in the front row. If Vinny wins and Strike comes in last place, Vinny is advancing on to the tournament. Don't forget about West Coastin. If the same happens for West Coastin, we'll have a tie. There's some bumping and banging through the turn. West Coastin still has a lead, followed by Vinny Dobbs. It's a dogfight. Strike trying to push ahead into first place. Oh man, this is awesome. A real battle on the road right here. Strike in second place now. West Coastin maintaining his position. Strike trying to take over. And West Coastin will slide past the finish line for the win. But it is Strike who will be advancing on to King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament Number 1. Look at that score. That was a very close finish. And it appears Strike is stopping over at Don Quixote. They've got some good deals that make a donkey. Well, these drivers certainly saved the best for last. This was an amazing race. Strike may not have won this last race, but just look at the way he's working his way up to the front of the pack. Right here, he cuts off Vinny Dobbs to take second place. He appears to be a very smart driver. He knows when to take risks and when to back off. You know, that's very insightful. Did you learn that at the Crazy Jimmy School Driving? Oh no, he teaches never back off, only take risks. That sounds like Jimmy. And there we have it, the bracket for King of the Mountain. Season four, tournament number one is full. Strike qualifies in 13th place, putting the UK into the tournament. Mark D in that DeLorean is definitely the driver to watch in this tournament. He is the fastest. Also watch out for Finn Theodore in that Camaro IROC Z. And don't forget J. Eduardo Rodriguez Vasquez. We certainly can't forget that name. It just rolls off the tongue. Well, I am certainly looking forward to this tournament. We hope you enjoyed tonight's race. If you did, give me a hell yeah and hit that like button. Until next time, I'm 3D Botmaker. And I'm 2D. And you've been watching King, King of, of the, the Mountain. Mountain.